Um, big game at the weekend, boys. Man United versus Manchester City. Um, who's going to win, Henry? I think City will win quite comfortably. Guardiola will do another double. And I think this will be Ten Hag's last game in the Man United. Uh, at Man United. And it will be a... Fr- I think for the United fans, it's almost like they just want the game to be over so they can start a new kind of process or, or start a new like project. For Guardiola put another trophy in the cabinet man city once again keep on winning I, I, I to be honest i think i think today wasn't isn't harry maguire been announced that he's not playing but mason mount is available i mean if he's not playing i don't know what your back four is going to be i don't know who you're going to play at center back it can't be casemiro again i mean the guy's knees are like more screwed up than stone colds mate like and that guy wore a <laughs> knee brace for his whole career so yeah I, I think i think man city could quite easily score three or four goals against this Man United team. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. It's just about, for, for United, for, for you and the fans, I think it's just about getting getting to the end of the game, moving on. Do, do you have any faith, Terry, that you, you're going to win? We'll talk about that in a minute. What, what are you saying, Will? <laughs> what do Man United have to do, in your opinion, to try? I mean, they've got to try and beat City. What, what do you think they have to do? What do you think they can do uh, in this game to try and come out with, with the trophy? Yeah, pray. You know, um, you know, gotta give just all your faith to God because that's what you're gonna need, especially in that back line. Um, and you know, I don't really think Harry Maguire, him not playing, look, that sounds like you know, may not it might have an advantage, but now nah, all to the side. Um, I, I think City should win, but I'm not gonna lie, I can definitely see a situation where Man United they go out there and they win that game. Like, I, I don't think it's just gonna be a, a complete battering, like how most People think that it will, but we know how the game's going to go. See, they're going to dominate possession, pass it around. They're going to probably score first. And then I think United are going to, at some point in time, catch them on the uh, counter. They make a mistake or something to get their goal. But I can definitely see Man United getting a result. Um, And and I feel like, you know, no matter what happens, uh, I think that you're bored. They still have to um, sack Ten Hag. You know, I don't think there should be any bias with however that game goes. You really think think United can get a result? Looking at how Foden are playing. Uh, yeah, the yo, you, you, I mean, look, like there's no such thing as guarantees in football. And I feel like whenever yeah, I, I feel like really confident about something happening, the opposite. So like yesterday, I wanted Atlanta to win. I didn't think that they were, but, you know, they ended up surprising by Leverkusen who haven't lost a game all season. Now, I know it's two very different situations, but, you know, I, I definitely do think that the players are going to be up for the game because you had a terrible season. You could possibly end it with the trophy. I think they're going to be motivated. That but Atalanta City team, should though, win. Like- the Atalanta team under Gasparini for at the entire Europa League campaign have been very organized and they're playing for him. And I don't think you'll see probably a better, I don't think we've seen a better team performance as well as individual performance from Lookman. Man United at the moment, well, when's the last mean... team performance they had where we were going, okay, they, they were serious today? Or even that, other than a few Bruno Fernandes moments here or there or a bit of magic from Garnacho or Hoyland, getting goals here or that we haven't seen too many individual bits of brilliance from man united or a team performance like i don't see i, I kind of think this is a david versus goliath situation like unless yeah but david moment, won. yeah yeah but it's gonna take either a sending off a dodgy penalty yeah. like something like that's got to happen for me i think liverpool liverpool, liverpool uh, i think city will steamroll them i, so I no just want to know one thing go to extra time Nah, this is going to be Jason Love, like, absolute pounding. Pause. Before, yeah. before, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before I, we I do just don't see, Look at Man United right now. They've had their worst. Terry, is that your worst Premier League finish ever? Yeah. Lowest position, not the lowest points, but yeah, pretty much. Lowest position ever. The manager, look, we all know Ten Hag's not going to be there, right? Yeah, he's gone. I just don't see a way in which Man United do it. I, I'm not being, like, negative or anything. I just Man City are too good. Well, you know when Man like City, Arsenal beat Man Chelsea City in the FA Cup final. Right. Oh man, Man City doing the domestic double, winning another Manchester derby, and of course also winning what is it, their eighth FA Cup in something like that, yeah, some crazy like that. They they're probably gonna win. But Terry, my question is before we do, I do any predictions. Is Rashford? Do you think Rashford or uh, or any of these guys play, or do you play Diallo, Garnacho, Hoyland? You just think about the future. Do, do you know what's really interesting? In, in the since the art, we played quite well against Arsenal, and I'm, when I say quite well, I'm talking in the context of how poor we have been in the build up to that. I'm not talking yeah. well from a general football perspective. 
And a lot of people said it was because Arsenal let us play. We, we then played well in, in some good phases against Newcastle. We actually went away from home to Brighton where we very rarely get results and we won that game as well. And we made some changes to the team in terms of our four, our inside forwards were tucking into the midfield three. We kind of created this interesting shape. It was a 4-3-3, but the front three were at sort of like a slant. And it made it harder in phases, especially for Arsenal, to play through us as, 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 as a point. I thought Ahmad came into those games and Ahmad looked really tidy. He started to score goals. He started to influence Hit and miss for Garnacho. I think he, he kind of, he's a 19-year-old, so he had some good games and some bad games in that. We saw Rasmus come off the bench, two games running, and look a better player than when starting, which matches exactly what the scouting profile said, that he's probably two years away from being ready to lead the line because there's a lot of rawness about his game. Bruno's come back from injury, and, he, and he's, looked, he's looked very good in the last few matches. And what's really encouraging is we've got some centre... Back. Look, we're looking right now, we've actually only got one, two, one, two, three players are currently injured for this game with Mount coming back. Martial is suddenly fit after being out all year. And then Victor Lindelof. It's, a, it's the smallest injury list we've had all season for the final game. So hopefully you've got Varane and you've got Martinez fit for this game because Casemiro at centre-back is, is a big worry. I'm not then worried about the body of Varane. Get, play your heart out. If your hamstring rips at the end of the game, your hamstring rips. We don't need you next year. And I mean that with all due respect to him. So we're at a point where we, we, we're we probably going to be the most balanced we've been in terms of injuries for a while. We started to play well in, in comparison to the months leading up to the last few weeks. I understand what everybody's saying. And Man United should, in theory, take an absolute beating in this game. And we could do. We could walk away losing 4-0, w- losing 5-0. I just have a sneaky little feeling we might pull something off. Got a sneaky... And I'm not talking about outplaying Man City. I do not believe we'll outplay them in terms of have more of the ball, rip them apart. I just have a feeling it could be one of those games, if we don't concede after 13 seconds again... It could be one of those games where we nick a 1-0. One of those games where we nick a 2-1 with a few counter-attack goals. I wouldn't start Rashford, and I actually wouldn't start Rasmus Hoyland either. I would actually leave two players like that on the bench to come on later in the game against tired legs. I think if we start them, they're easier to contain. So I'd actually keep them on the bench and go with the team that's played quite well recently. The biggest conundrum is what to do with Casemiro. Does Casemiro move back into the midfield? Now that we seem to be protecting the midfield to cover up for his lack of legs, or do we stick with Amrabat, who up until the Brighton game have played really well? So listen, I'm I'm nervous about the game. City are the outright favourites. I completely agree. They're most likely to beat us. In the previous six meetings, I think we have one win against them. The odds are against us. But if you're a betting person and you have a little flutter here and there, Stick a couple of pounds on Man United winning the trophy. How we got there is ridiculous. And sometimes these stories exist in football. So I'm going into this not confident, but with some hope that we can stop the double from happening this year and and walk away with, you know, which would again be a first FA, you know, first in eight years. You know, we won it in 2016. Okay. It's a massive trophy. It's a huge historic trophy. Biggest cup competition, domestic cup competition in the world. And I want to win it. And listen, boys, go out there and, and do the business if you can. And at the very least, if you're going to lose, lose with some pride. Lose being in the game. Don't, don't go out there and get battered 4 5 6 nil. Because that then, just losing to City 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, it's not embarrassing. They're the best team in the world. It isn't embarrassing in the context of where we are. Getting battered in the final is. So I hope they hear this. I hope that loads of people are saying this and I hope it gets into that dressing room and they go, do you know what? No matter what happens, if we do concede first, if we are struggling, we keep ourselves as a unit, we play for each other because anything is possible in a 90-minute game. So, look, I'm not massively confident, but I'm backing the boys to go and do it. If you get the penalties, you know you're going to win because they're terrible at penalties. But, but yeah, true. <laughs> one thing, But one thing I'm going to say, Terry, both Chelsea and Newcastle fans are going to want you to lose because of, because of their implications. So it's gonna be int- it's gonna be funny if you guys win, Chelsea finish what basically in Conference League and Newcastle don't get European football at all. If you oh, lose, wow. yeah. you don't get European football. So would you want to be in Europe? Um, I, I sort of look at it like 
I mean, look, I want being in Europe. I, I, I'll stand true to what I say. I know people talk about you can do more coaching because you're not playing. But whenever I listen to players speak, they believe that playing two games a week is better for them. So I, I'm I'm up for being in it. We have no idea how good or bad we'll be next year. Imagine next season. Say we bring the Zerbi in as an example, and we're really good. You might look at it and go, bloody, I wish we were in the Europa League. We'd have a chance of another trophy. I'd rather have the chance of winning a trophy than not at all. I don't know where this weird notion has come in recently of, I don't want to be in the Champions League. We might not. I don't think we can win it. I don't know where that's come from. I'm just someone that believes you're in it. You try and win it. And you've got to share. If you're not in it, you definitely don't win. This is the one thing I'd say. If you don't enter, if you're not in it, you are 100% guaranteed not to win it. So I'd rather be in the Europa League than out of it. The only element is we, we reportedly can spend £100 million pound more if we're out of it because we haven't got to comply with the 70% rule um, under FFP. But that's the only element of being out of it that could help us. We might be able to buy some more players. Development for your players, you probably should want to be in it. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives people opportunity to play. All of that, 100%. 100%. You know, I, yeah, I, I want to be in it because I want to win. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know where this notion has come from recently that people don't want to qualify for European competitions. It's You watch, our, you, you watch our, our continental counterparts and how serious they take these tournaments. The arrogance of English football fans, like, it's just the Europa, it's just the Conference League. I feel like, some, fuck you, disrespecting football like that. Like, genuinely, fuck you. It's, it's a disgrace. And I don't believe half of them. I believe people use it as a coping shield mechanism. for disappointment. That's what yeah. it is, a coping mechanism. But Terry, so, you unfortunately, your Man City are just a juggernaut of a team. I don't think the team's going to be able to stop them from winning another trophy this season. But if you, like do, you, in it, yeah, I know. Listen, we we've all lost to City at some point. Even you will. You lost to them last year. But hey, if 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 they do do another domestic double, they're just one more trophy closer to overtaking Arsenal and over over to overall trophies. It's ridiculous, bro. Yeah.